All right, so let's delve a little bit deeper into actual MDX concepts. The last video was really sort of like the meta game of MDX here. But what I want to get into now are specific terms, specific ways that we talk when we're dealing with MDX here. Now, to, to take us back to the SQL world for a second, when you write a SQL statement, you are inside of a database, and your SQL statement says, I want the data from this table. Okay, and in this example, we're saying, I want the data from that table. I don't want data from other tables. Don't even include them. So SQL is a, a almost you could say, an explicit language, meaning that you have to explicitly state what it is you want. You will not get other things unless you ask for them. Like, we're not going to get customer data here, are we? No. If it's an employee table we're querying, that's all we're getting. And when we get into MDX, you could say that this is an inclusive language almost. The entire cube will be included unless you do something else. Now that's very different. I'm going to have to state that again because it's so important to understanding what MDX is and how it relates to SQL. SQL, you have to ask for it. If you don't ask for it, you will not get it back. MDX, you don't ask for it, I'm going to think that you meant something and I'm going to assume something and I'm going to give this something back to you. Now I'm intentionally using these words something because we need to get into some other concepts a little bit deeper uh, later. But, but think of those two differences as I'm going through the next couple of videos. SQL, you have to say, I want this. MDX, you are retrieving the data from the entire cube when you write a select statement. Okay? All dimensions are going to be returned. Okay, all the dimensions are going to be included in your select list. You're not having to explicitly say which dimensions that you want. They are there. And it's a logical reason. And I'll explain that to you as this video goes on. But as the person writing the MDX code, your job is to tell SQL Server Analysis Services exactly which slice of the cube, which section of the cube, which cell of the cube that you want returned. Okay? By default it's just going to return the whole cube so you have to say no I, I specifically I'm looking for the intersection of these dimensions or I specifically want to slice right here. Okay? Now I think this is a case where that visual perspective we talked about in the last video really helps this make sense. Okay? Let's put X along geography on this one. Okay, So this is our geo this is our time, and then this is our total sales along Z. Okay, So we've got the 3D visualization. Let me zoom in just in case you didn't watch the last video. It's showing a 3D representation of the data. If we want a specific data point, we have to provide three coordinates. The value for X, the value for Y, and the value for Z in the 3D space. Now, how about this? Let's answer this question. What if I'm asked to return the total sales for 2010? Do I simply return where X, or rather where Y and Z meet? Or do I return something else? Can you ignore geography when you're saying total sales for 2010? Aha, this is where that that implicit part that I mentioned earlier comes into play. Analysis services is actually going to say, oh, you didn't say that you wanted geography, so I'm going to assume that you meant over all geography. Now we're going to talk about how it makes that assumption a little bit later because it might have just chosen, I'm going to assume that you meant the United States. We'll have to talk about how that assumption process works a little bit later, maybe one, two, three, four videos from now, somewhere uh, here in the future here. Okay? So we are not ignoring geography in this question. 
it is using all you remember the hierarchical level all the all member that's what it's actually going to use this question gets converted into what are the total sales across all geographies for 2010 that's what it gets translated in by SSAS okay remember I said you're querying the entire cube let's say that this is all that you had you had two dimensions in one measure then that's what you're doing you're saying give me the total sales across all geographies for 2010 okay you're not able to ignore a dimension okay. now how about this one same question but let's flip it around what are the total sales for the USA is it skipping the time dimension is it ignoring the time dimension or what is it likely going to do it's probably going to use the all member right it's going to automatically translate this to mean what are the total sales for the USA over all time periods. Now again there is an assumption going on and you and I are going to have to spend some serious time understanding default members and auto exists and some other parts of working with SSAS and we'll do that coming up. Uh, so if you are still a little bit confused don't worry we've got a couple more videos on this that I'm going to set you all right uh, make it a lot more palatable I think for you now a reminder before we get into the syntax remember that dimensions can consist of attributes and hierarchies and your hierarchies are arranged into levels right nothing new there a member is a value within your hierarchy okay? and you have a cell set here's a new term here a cell set and I've seen it both with a space and without a space is the result of running an MDX query and in that you have your member data along the axes and then we have the measure data in the cells so like here is a cell right here that shows us the gross revenue okay. now MDX gives us the ability to address only a certain cell or a section of the cube space using what's called a tuple now this is a uh, a much debated word here, a tuple, a tuple, data, data, uh, potato, patata, pacuna matata, <laughs> I mean, right, tuple, tuple, I don't care how you say it, you can say it either way and it's right and I'll probably throughout the course uh, of the chapter, I'll probably say it both ways just out of habit, it doesn't matter to me which way you say it, anybody's going to know what a tuple or a tuple is. I think that my default way of saying it is just tuple. Um, but then I've heard uh, probably as many people say tuple. I, okay, it, it's just a whichever, it's like SQL and SQL. Which, is, which do you say? Do you say SQL server or do you say SQL server? Okay. I say SQL server. I might be in the minority worldwide. I have no clue, but that's what I would actually say. So what is a tuple? What is a tuple? It is a way to uniquely address each cell or section of the cube. Now we're going to further explain this because that's not, that's like a textbook definition. It does not give you an understanding. It, technically that's basically what it is in fact that's even a little higher level than what it truly is but we haven't gotten deep enough to understanding it yet so you and I are gonna have to spend some quality time together a little bit in this video but really in about three videos from now in the course talking about tuples and sets and how all of this works together uh, because I want you to be able to understand this. I want you to be able to talk to people about what a tuple tuple is and be comfortable that what you're saying is able to come across to the other person as something that makes sense. I've read too many articles, books, uh, presentations, uh, I've been to presentations where somebody just presents this technical definition and then that's all they explain and people are left scratching their heads and so I'm going to try to help you understand what these are because truly understanding MDX requires understanding tuples okay? understanding tuples though requires <laughs> understanding MDX <laughs> and it reminds me of my one of my favorite graphics uh, that can take a second <laughs> to read <laughs> okay 
it's just fun. Just it, I, I found that somewhere, I don't know, five, eight, ten years ago or so, and I, I love finding uses of it. Uh, anyhow, so when you write your MDX statement, your, your tuple, your tuple will identify the slices or the sections of the cube that you're going to be working with, okay? It's the intersection of the measures dimensioned and the other dimensions, time and geography, for example, that are shown as the cells. Okay? Your tuple identifies which dimension members intersect with the other dimension members. Okay? You're defining which time member to intersect with which geography. 2010 USA. 2010 all geography. All years USA. That's what your tuple is defining. All right, so another way a tuple is a listing of a specific member for each dimension in the cube. Now, this is a, a an even more accurate yet more technical definition of what a tuple is. It's, again, an addressing scheme. It is a way to address a specific cell or section. And we call it a tuple because it's actually an ordered list of all of the members, specific members for each dimension. Okay. Now we're going to get into it here uh, because when we start when we start working with this, we're going to see that some of this is optional. And we're going to see partial tuples and uh, complete tuples. And uh, Hold on. Let's just do this. Let's finish out this video, and we'll get into some syntax, and then come back and get it deeper. But again, let's go through a visual. Remember, X is geography, Y is time, Z is total sales. How would you return total sales for 2010? Right. Here is the tuples that we would have to use. Right. For our top one here, the tuple would reference both 2010 and the all-time member in the time hierarchy. Right. For total sales, now our tuple has to define the intersection, right? USA and all geographies. Now, syntactically, I'm going to show you how that works. Right. We're going to get into that. So I can't really go too much deeper with what tuples are and how they actually work until we get some syntax to play with. Because I'll tell you what, here, here's my belief. You need syntax examples to understand how default members and all members will work and, and, and how analysis services will go through its resolution process here. So I'll tell you what, let's do a quick... Uh, like a, a here's a basic syntax thing we'll talk about uh, names versus values and on columns and on rows and things like that so let's do the understanding basic MDX syntax and we'll come back and then we'll go a little bit deeper with tuples and sets